Greetings. Welcome to the next episode of A Crohn's Disease Life. I'm your host, Michael A. Weiss. The title for today's episode is called One More Rectal Exam and I'm Out of This Hospital. <laughs> now you're sitting there saying, huh? One more rectal exam and I'm out of this hospital? Why should I listen further? What can this person possibly have to say that would help me? Well, that was going to be the title of my book. I wrote a book about my 25-year battle with Crohn's disease, both in and out of the hospital. And it was a funny book, but it was very instructive. And luckily, the publishers changed it to Confessions of a Professional Hospital Patient because we didn't want to offend anyone. So you could check out the book at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, or on my site, which is HospitalPatient.com. And again, it's called Confessions of a Professional Hospital Patient. And just to finish the plug, it's a, it's a humorous but respectful book about what it's like to, to live, love, and laugh with chronic illness, both in and out of the hospital. And a lot of people tell me that it's a must read for, for patients and their families and their loved ones. So check it out. Uh, I think you'll learn a lot from it. Now, why am I calling this one more rectal exam and I'm out of the hospital? This is because when I've been hospitalized uh, in my 20s, I'm 47 now, I would go into the hospital and a very nice doctor would sit and take my history and give me a thorough exam, including a rectal exam. Listen, Crohn's disease affects the digestive tract. I kind of had no choice, and that was fine. But then three hours later, another doctor, a little younger, would do the exact same thing. Well, I remember the first time it happened, it was a very attractive woman, so I I kind of didn't really mind, just kidding, uh, but it did start to bother me. I was like, why do I have to go through this like four or five times? I mean, I know it's a teaching hospital, but come on, I, I'm in a lot of pain. So I started learning uh, what the different types of physicians are and uh, what they do. And, and face it, we all hear the word resident, uh, attending, fellow, intern. What does it all mean? And, and really, as a patient, what are my rights? What do I have to submit to? When is it okay for me to say, thank you very much, but I've already gone through that with my attending physician? Well, I'm going to tell you. Doctors go through four years of college, and then they go to four years of medical school. Now, medical school for some is osteopathic medicine, and they get a DO in medicine. And for others, it's a more traditional medical school, and they get an MD. What's the difference? Uh, osteopathic medicine basically has more holistic uh, treatments in it so that in, it incorporates a more holistic approach but in practicality there is no difference now for you if you wanna if you have a friend who has a DO I think you could bust their chops and say you don't really have a medical degree I'm just kidding but that's about all it's good for because once they finish medical school they get a degree saying that they are a doctor but they can't practice they need to go through what's called a residency now residencies are in hospitals and they're typically three to seven years in length. The longer length residencies are for the more complex specialties like surgery, uh, maybe even some type of uh, gastroenterology uh, uh, specialties, you know, if they specialize in diseases, uh, you know, maybe obstetrics. You know, but the point is, is that it's important that these students go out and learn what everything they were taught in medical school works in the real world. So when a doctor does a residency, it's actually for all of our benefit because they get to see a patient from diagnosis to treatment to outcome. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes they're misdiagnosed. Sometimes the outcome is different than what they thought. They need to see the whole cycle. So that's why the term resident came about because a lot of times these doctors, they work very, very hard and they often sleep at the hospital because they need to see the whole cycle. And when you think about it, it makes sense uh, because you could learn all you want in a book, but unless you're out there in the field, uh, that's the only way you'll learn how to practice medicine. And uh, so it's for our benefit. Now, the first year of residency is often referred to, that doctor is often referred to as a quote unquote intern. Now, uh, that would make sense. It's sort of like an apprenticeship. But as time has gone on, I think physicians have learned, uh, young physicians have learned, that the word intern is basically Latin for the word schmuck because uh, the older physicians dump on that, as well they should, because they want them to sort of get thrown as much stuff as possible so that they could learn. 
and uh, I'm kidding about that, about a meaning the word schmuck, but first year residents have it very, very hard. So when you're in the hospital and you meet someone who's a first year resident, you will probably see that they have black rings under their eyes, they rarely sleep, and they're overworked. So uh, try to have pity with them. And I know that some states have even tried to pass laws to limit how many hours a resident could work because you certainly don't want a physician falling asleep while they're treating you. But there's a fine line because they, they need to work a lot of hours so that they could understand the whole circle of uh, patient care. So if you ever read about those issues, that's really what's at the center of it. So, uh, but respect those docs. Now, uh, there are all sorts of classifications within residency. There's the chief resident, you know, who's usually the brightest and the best. And so if you're in a hospital bed and in the morning the doctors are making their rounds, usually the uh, attending physician, I'll get to that in a second, will be calling the shots, but they'll be trailed by a bunch of uh, white coats who are residents or interns or chief resident, etc. So that's what that's all about. And I actually think that if you're an inpatient in a hospital, on a blackboard in the hospital, they should say who your doctor is and then also explain who these other people are so that when they come to take your history and to do a uh, third rectal exam of the day, you could say, uh, thank you, but I've already had that done. I understand what you're trying to do, but I'm an experienced patient. I go through enough pain and uh, my dignity is sort of, you know, breached a lot in the hospital. I understand that has to happen, but uh, I already had a rectal exam and please I would appreciate if you wouldn't do it again. And usually they will say, we understand, they will walk away. Just be nice and respectful about it. So now we go from residents to interns and one thing you also have to keep in mind, residency is three years to seven years. And obviously the seven years is for the more uh, the more complicated specialties like surgery, uh, whereas the three years could be for family medicine. But I always think of the derma dermatological specialty because when you think about it, what kind of dermatological emergency will that be? I mean, you'll be at dinner, you'll get a phone call, oh my God, what do we do? And as a dermatological doctor, your answer is going to be, well, give them Shmia A or Shmia B. You know, what's going to be the difference? But uh, obviously with skin cancer, things have changed, but it is a very competitive specialty to get into because uh, it's not traditionally life and death. So uh, dermatological uh, residencies have varied over the years. And I'm, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not sure if it's on the three or on the seven year length, but it, it's been harder and harder. So usually derm dermatologists are the brightest uh, of the students because they get the first crack at it. And again, medicine's changed because uh, with the advent of plastic surgery and uh, the ease with which someone can change their appearance, uh, it, it's sort of an offshoot of dermatology, I would imagine. Also a combination of surgery, so that could lead to a much longer residency. Well, when they finish their residency, doctors are then classified as attending physicians. And you hear that phrase a lot, and uh, what does it mean? Well, when they are the attending physicians, that means their name is going to be on your chart. So my name again is Michael Weiss, so my chart would say, let's say Dr. Schwartz. That's the doctor who admitted me, that's the doctor who's going to discharge me, that's the doctor who's going to recommend me for tests, that's the doctor who's legally responsible for me in the hospital. So that is the attending physician. So just so you know where that is. Now past that, there's something called a fellowship. And then the doctors are called fellows. These are for physicians who are going for even more education and more practical hands-on experience. They could get their fellowship in gastroenterology or neurosurgery. Uh, and it's, it, again, it varies how many years it is. Uh, but these are doctors who are extremely dedicated and they want to be the best of the best. Uh, and then there's also board certification. Now I'm not sure if a physician can be board certified without being a fellow. I believe they can. But being board certified means you know they pass through the residency program but then they apply to be board certified by going for more education and then taking tests. And keep in mind that all of these doctors every single year have to keep up with continuing education so that you know when they treat you you can be uh, assured that you're getting the most current up-to-date treatment possible. So board certification is really nice to see in a doctor. 
Now on the flip side, if you see a doctor and you're treated by a doctor that you really like and they're not board certified, that doesn't mean that they're an idiot. It, it, you know, it could mean a lot of things, but they just didn't pursue board certification. So it's not a negative, but it's certainly a positive. Okay, so just to sum up, you have medical school, DO, MD, basically the same thing. Residency, three to seven years. The first year intern, sometimes called schmuck amongst uh, physicians. And then when you finish the residency, you are an attending, which is a full-fledged physician. And then after that, you could become a fellow and get a fellowship. And uh, also after you are an attending, you could become board certified in a specialty. So I hope that cleared up the technical jargon, and I hope you will not have to endure uh, many rectal exams when you're in the hospital. So uh, see, this uh, video podcast uh, did have a purpose. So thank you for listening. If you have any questions or would you, or you would like to suggest a topic for the future, please feel free to contact me at michaelweiss at hospitalpatient.com. You can follow me on Twitter. Uh, my name on Twitter is just Hospital Patient. And again, the book uh, is uh, Confessions of a Professional Hospital Patient. Uh, it's available on Amazon, barnesandnoble.com, and also on my site, uh, hospitalpatient.com. Thank you, and uh, have a happy holiday season. Thank you.